Joining me now on Skype to talk more about President Trump's list of potential Supreme Court nominees is John Malcolm, Vice President of the Institute for Constitutional Government at the Heritage Foundation. John, welcome back. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, I know that you know this process well. Back in 2016, you compiled a list of potential Supreme Court nominees to to secede, that is, Justice Scalia, and nearly all of your recommendations ended up making the White House list of nominees. What's your initial impressions of those listed to fill a p- potential vacancy on the high court? And what are some of the characteristics that they share? Sure. Well, I was I was very pleased by the list and impressed by it and, and delighted to see that the last name on my original list that he had not included got added. Uh, and so actually five names, uh, several of four of whom I recently recommended, made it on to the president's uh, list. And I think that these are are excellent people. I don't know all of them. I'm, you know, I, I watched that blockbuster speech by Daniel Cameron, the Kentucky Attorney General. There's a Third Circuit judge, uh, Peter Phipps, uh, whom I'm not familiar with. But I'm going to start studying their records. Uh, I was surprised that three senators were put on the list. So the president had previously only put on the list uh, sitting judges, with the exception of Senator Mike Lee. He's obviously now added not only Paul Clement, who was on my original list, but Noel Francisco, Daniel Cameron, the three senators uh, whom you mentioned. So he's broadened the aperture of the types of candidates that he is on this list uh, are a bit better known by social conservatives uh, and not so much focused on things like uh, expressing a concern or criticism of uh, the power of executive branch agencies. So there was a bit of a nod towards social conservatives. Uh, but these are some very, very well-qualified men and women. You mentioned uh, Paul Clement, one of your original choices. Let's talk about him a, a little bit more. And uh, he has been added to the president's updated list, as you mentioned. What makes him a strong candidate? Well, he's, he's the preeminent Uh, Supreme Court litigator uh, in the country. Paul has argued over 100 cases before the high court and and dozens, if not hundreds, before the lower uh, federal courts of appeals on a whole slew of issues. Anybody who's ever watched him uh, in court knows that he is a brilliant advocate with a keen mind. Uh, He's also a superb writer. I mean, his his briefs are a pleasure to read. And I have no doubt that if he was an associate justice, that he would bring that keen mind and that rather sparkling uh, writing quality to bear. He would be an outstanding justice. Uh, You know, he's just getting at it now. uh, But I would note that Justice Gorsuch uh, was not on the original list by President Trump. He made it to the second iteration. Brett Kavanaugh made it to the third iteration. And now they are both uh, justices Uh, on the Supreme Court. So the same thing could happen to Paul Clement, and I, for one, would be very pleased by that. Were there any picks that surprised you? Yeah, I was surprised to see uh, three senators uh, on there, not that there's anything uh, wrong with them. So Josh Hawley, who granted has said he's not interested, uh, clerk for Chief Justice Roberts, uh, Senator Cruz, clerk for Chief Justice William uh, Rehnquist. Tom Cotton didn't clerk for Supreme Court Justice, but he clerked for Judge Jerry Smith on the Fifth Circuit. Uh, These are three very smart individuals who clearly know a lot about and care a lot about uh, the Constitution. Uh, Daniel Cameron, certainly very, very young, uh, but shows a lot of promise. After he gave his speech, I remember turning to some friends next to me who watched it and said, well, there's a guy who's got a future. Uh, Well, part of that future now involves being on the Supreme Court list. But, you know, he's very young. He's 34. Uh, Alison Rushing, who is whip smart on the Fourth Circuit. She wasn't on my list, but I was delighted to see her name. Uh, is only 38, but but she clerked for a number of great uh, judges, including Justice Thomas. Uh, and if they are if their time hasn't come now, I certainly hope that perhaps their time will come at some point in the future, perhaps during a second Trump term. Well, John, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate your time and your insight. John Malcolm, Vice President of the Institute for Constitutional Government at the Heritage Foundation. Thanks again. Good to be with you.